Chapter 6, I'm um, going to look a little while at, at Gideon, uh, just reading um, a couple of verses from um, verse 11. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak that was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abizurite, as his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress in order to save it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. Then Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out from Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord looked at him and said, Go in this your strength and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? He said to him, O oh Lord, how shall I deliver Israel? Behold, my family is the least in Manasseh, and I am the youngest in my father's house. But the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat Midian as one man. This um, account of Gideon, uh, one of the judges of Israel, um, uh, in uh, beginning in chapter 6, is a, um, a fairly common um, uh, or we see this this response to God repeated in Scripture. We we heard it in, from Moses, "Who am I, Lord, that, that I could go and and I, you know I'm not eloquent and I I don't have this and I don't have that." And and uh, here you see Gideon the same saying, "I am um, my family is the least in Manasseh and I am the youngest in my father's house. Basically, I am not able to do what you are telling me to do." And uh, I, I guess that we all suffer with that, um, really. Um, once we have come to understand uh, that we are sinners in need of a saviour and that we need the Lord Jesus and the wonder of the fact that he came and he died and he offers us redemption. And uh, once we've received that redemption and we've come into the family of God and then we start to understand that, that God is calling us to go out to go out um, uh, with his message, to go out uh, to make disciples, as Jesus said, uh, in all the different ways that he calls us to do that within the family of God, how we have uh, gifts and uh, how he uses uh, circumstances and, and, and maneuvers everything for us. We all of us, um, all of us, I think, come back to, especially at the beginning of our walk with the Lord, the fact that we are not able. Have you really seen who I am, Lord? Do you know who I am? You're asking me to do this? How can I possibly do this? You know, there's so many things. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a woman, I'm weak, I'm, um, I'm old, uh, or I'm too young, or I don't have an intelligence, or I don't have position, I don't have reputation, all of the things that uh, we come back to God with. You know, I'm not good at speaking. I don't understand easily. People don't like me usually. I'm not very popular. Um, over and over and over again, all the reasons why God couldn't use us and why he must be making a mistake to have come to us and asked us to do the thing that he's asking us to do. And it's, it's, it's pictured here for us so clearly with Gideon, you know, my family is the least in manner say I'm, I'm, we're not important lord we're, we're just like low downers you know we we don't have any position and and i'm the youngest in my family so i mean of all of my family i am the last one that you should choose to um to do this and um and as i say i think we are all we're all guilty of it we all do it because all of us inevitably end up looking at ourselves instead of looking at our God. And all of the time throughout scripture, God is saying to everybody, do not look at yourself, look at me. Keep your eyes focused on me. Keep your eyes set on who I am, on all that I have done and all that I have promised. Be Put your trust in me and not in yourself. 
that, what is that proverb? Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You know, we always acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. In, in countless ways through scripture, God says the same thing. I am with you, therefore you are able to do all that I call you to do. I love, I love the uh, times that I read this in scripture because uh, probably like me, uh, well maybe, I don't know, I, I suffer a lot from that, from, from looking too much at myself and thinking I can't do it or how will I do that or I don't know how to do it or I don't even know what the next step is Lord, what am I going to do? And uh, over and over again it seems like the Lord has to teach me and, and will you stop looking at yourself and will you simply look at me? <coughs> Excuse me, will you keep your eyes focused on Jesus? <coughs> will you put your trust in me that I who call will be the one who enables? And over and over again God is faithful and has been faithful and here in Gideon in Gideon's life, in Judges 6, 7 and 8, God will be faithful to Gideon and will fulfill all that he promises uh, to Gideon that he will do. And Gideon will learn to trust him. And, um, and that's really what you and I have to do. We must learn to put our trust in the Lord, to turn our eyes from ourselves and put them onto the Lord. The problem is, you see, when you and I look at ourselves, we look at the old man. We look at the person we used to be because we cannot see the new creation in Christ Jesus. We cannot see the new being that has been brought into existence by the Spirit of God coming and taking up residence in us. You and I see what we've always seen. We see our weakness. We see our failings. We see our sin. We see our shortcomings. We see all the things that we are not. And we do not understand that God calls into being the things that are not. He gives life to the things that are not. He raises up those things that are not. Um, Paul will say in, um, in 1 Corinthians, well, there are not many noble, not many wise, not many um, uh, intelligent, not many uh, were called because God chose the foolish things to shame the wise. He chose the base things, the despised things, to shame the things that are. You and I know only too well our shortcomings, but we don't know well enough the, the greatness of our God. And that would be, um, I think, the message from Gideon, um, and the message all the way through the scripture. Get to know your God. That's what we're doing. I mean, that's what we're doing, isn't it? We're getting to know our God through the word. We're understanding more about him. We're reading about people like us to whom God promised that he would do great and mighty things through and for. And um, we're, we're understanding, we're seeing he's giving us living examples of people who have done, have gone before us and have done what God called them to do and how God has enabled them to do it. And that gives us encouragement to go on, encouragement to keep on, to trust God, to keep our eyes focused on him, to learn more about him, to, to be able to see uh, through his eyes, through his perspective, all that he's calling us to do. You and I, we have been given an awesome, awesome ministry. We have the ministry of reconciliation, Paul will say. We are reconciling, we are offering reconciliation through our mouth. God is speaking out the gospel of grace to a world that needs to hear it and offering them reconciliation with him. You and I, we have um, the cure, the cure for the entire sickness of mankind. We hold that in our minds and in our hearts and we are being called to speak it out. And God has told us that I will be with you. I will be with you. I will tell you what to say. I will enable you to say it. I will be with you wherever you go. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. We heard him say it to Joshua a while back. Here again, he's going to say it to Gideon. But the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you will defeat Midian as one man. We could talk a lot about Midian and, and how um, Gideon will go on to defeat them, but suffice for now, for for, for today, 
Let it be that you and I decide that we will put our trust in God, that we won't spend a moment longer looking at all of our inadequacies, but we will look at him who makes us more than adequate to do what he has called us to do. See you next time.